Please join us as we center our thoughts. Oh my God, I love you. Oh my God, I love you. You're all around inside me. Oh my God, run through me. Oh my God, I love you. Join in as you get it. Oh my God, I love you. You're all around inside me. Oh my God, go through me. Oh my God, I love you. Oh my God, I love you. You're all around inside me. Oh my God, flow through me. One more time together. Oh my God, I love you. Oh my God, I love you. You're all around inside me. Oh my God, flow through me. Good morning. How's everyone feeling today? Great. Excellent. Y'all beautiful, all the smiling faces out there. Welcome to Unity of Kona. My name is Nick. My name is Mark Paul. And we're joined by, of course, Rev. Deb and Larry Sire. And we want to welcome you today to this beautiful, beautiful day. Anybody have trouble parking? <laughs> <laughs> no, it gets worse, trust me, it really gets worse. Let's start today by standing and saying our affirmation for the month of October. Can you believe wow. it's October? Wow. We'll say it first and then repeat after us. I, I seek and find the good in everyone, everyone and, and everything, everything I, I am grateful. grateful. Together? I, I seek and, and find the good in everyone and everything, everything I am grateful. grateful. Amen. Now stay standing and sing our anchor song, Stand Again. Thank you. So every month we have a volunteer for the month. And if you read your bulletin, then you know who it is. But if you haven't, we're going to call her up anyway. Because she's busy signing up for what she does incredibly. Yeah. Carla. Carla, I didn't read it now. <laughs> she didn't have time to because she's volunteering doing stuff today. So Carla, we hope this for me. Yeah, I know. See, I knew you would read it, and so I'm glad you did it. I anyway. didn't even get one. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're, she wants to escape already, but we're honoring Carla because she does works at the thrift store tire, tirelessly. Uh, laundry, she's my number one laundry helper person. And also, if you, I would encourage you to go into the library because Carla has taken over doing our lending library in the refreshment room, and it's magnificent. It's so beautiful. So we truly appreciate, I mean, she does everything. She does our mending, our sewing. The, the, what doesn't she do, Larry? She does everything. <laughs> she does it all, and she does it with such love and appreciation. So we are just so grateful. And she knows, I tell her every day, like, wow, you know, can't do this without you. So if I need to be somewhere, she'll be where I need to be to take my place. Always, always there. So we're honored. Thank you, Carla. Thank you so much. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> you see, because you didn't read it because you were so busy doing so much other volunteering stuff <laughs> this morning. <laughs> And now we have asked the beautiful Cindy, who's actually signing up to volunteer right now as well. Yeah. We've got this ball rolling here. This is awesome. <laughs> to come up and read today's daily word. They're back. They're back. We're, We're good this time. Yeah. Ready? I see the divine in every animal on earth. Since the dawn of time, many species of animals and humans have interacted in trusting relationships. 
Animals add so much to our lives. They are pets, farmland, hens, and guides. Dogs love and guard us. Cats comfort us and keep mice at bay. Wool from sheep is used in clothing and blankets, and animals are essential transportation in villages around the world. I thank the universe for the contributions of animals. From the fish of the sea to the beautiful butterfly, I appreciate the unique strengths of each species. Whether it's a pet from my childhood or an exotic animal, I see the divine in every animal. They meet our needs with ease and grace. I see them loving energy and appreciate their interconnectedness. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and God saw that it was good. Genesis 1.25. Okay, I'll say the affirmation and you can repeat it after me. I see the divine in every animal on earth. I see the divine in every animal on earth. Thank you, Cindy. And now is the time where I invite you to visualize our sanctuary as a beautiful heart. And we see this heart moving in and around and through each one of us. And this heart encompasses all the love, the caring and compassion we have for ourselves and each other. And we see it moving through our thrift store back into Sunday school where the boys are just doing a great job of being with themselves today. And we're just honored and so blessed to be a part of everyone's life today. And in this time of filling our heart with love, if there's anyone that you know of in need of prayer, see them in our heart. And if you know of any circumstance in our world, of which there are many, we pray for those circumstances to be healed and whole and blessed in every way. And if there's any circumstance in your life that needs that loving prayer, see it in our heart as we sing the prayer for protection. And I invite you now to get comfortable where you are. Close your eyes if that feels right to you. We begin our time of centering in prayer by just breathing, taking a deep breath, that very breath of life that is God, holding it for a moment. And as we exhale, we begin to relax. Breathing in again deeply. And as we exhale this time, we just quiet our mind. We calm our emotions, affirming peace, be still. Breathing in again once more. And exhaling this time, we rest in the consciousness of our heart. Relaxing our breath. We know that this is our time of consciously reconnecting with the God of our being. We truly know that God is the source of our supply. God is the source of all good. And no matter what is happening in our lives, what is happening in our world, we affirm and know that even if we can't see it right now, all things work together for good for those who love God. Allow that love in your heart. Allow that conscious affirmative thought in your mind to bring the truth to your being. I am healthy, whole and complete. 
right here and right now. I am prosperous in every way, right here and right now. I have loving relationships in my life, right here and right now. I love my life. I love my work. Know these things to be true. And allow this truth to resonate in every cell of your being. God is the source of my supply of my health, my happiness, my wholeness, right here and right now. Allow this truth to rise from your heart, to fill you in a time of quiet prayer. Allow the love that you are resonate in your mind, your body, and your spirit in a time of silent prayer right now. I invite you now to take another deep breath. And as we exhale this time, we just allow that spirit, that light within to shine on our face. We smile. We smile and when we open our eyes, we allow that light, that presence, that spirit in us to shine for it. And we say right here and right now, thank you, God, for blessing us, for reminding us, for your presence in us each and every moment bringing that joy, that light, and that love in and around and through us in our conscious mind each day. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is.
Everybody got nice and relaxed and calm. So now I'll get you all fired up, right? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Okay, this is our month of prosperity. When I say the word prosperity, what comes to mind? First thing. Money. Money. Abundance. Did I say it here, wealth over there? Wealth. When you think of the word prosperity, does it most of the time think about money? It really does. And uh, when I first came to Unity, I remember um, when I would tell people, oh yeah, I go to that great Unity church, and they go, oh, yeah, all those Unity people, all they talk about is money. And I was like, really? I was like, that's not what I heard. And so a lot of times in our world, People will assume things about certain things, and most of the time, are they right? Usually not. Am I right when I assume something? No. Nope. It's one of those things where you just kind of fall. I tend to fall up lately. I like that, instead of falling flat on my face. But um, prosperity is just so much more than that. It's about having healthy relationships, about having love in your life, being able to have a consciousness that can see beyond what we see. And it all is, like Edwin Gain says, all the cash you can spend. She was my teacher in this whole thing called prosperity. And I remember, you know, in the religion that I was brought in, they always had that little thermometer when you walked in to see where the church was in their building fund. Any of you grow up in a place where the church was like that? And it tended, it was like the first thing you saw. And I was a poor kid. So I gave everything that I had, which wasn't much, babysitting money and whatever, to the church. I loved my church. I did. I really did love. I liked the old facility better than the new one they were building. Any of you get that way? about when the church decides to do something big and you go, well, wait a minute, I like where we were. Even if it was crowded and it was old and there was no parking. So change, we talked about this in the last few weeks. It's the only thing that's permanent. And so prosperity, to open your consciousness, I bless you, and know that it truly is more than just money. It's about having a generous spirit. Everyone in this room has a spirit of generosity, wouldn't you say? If someone needed something, who'd be the first people to help out? All of you. Isn't it fabulously true? And like, my husband had an experience this week at Long's and the customer standing in front of him <coughs> keeled over. Right there. And he's behind the counter and a unity person was standing in line. She just kind of took over in the midst of her own health challenges. That was quite amazing, I thought. And then everyone rallied around this woman who had just gone through some experiences that led her to that place where she just totally lost her consciousness for that moment. And she turned out to be OK. Right, honey? Yeah, OK, good. I thought that's what he told me. And so the blessings are, you never know where you're going to be, and someone might need your assistance. So our generosity of spirit in especially, you know, living in Hawaii, we love that we love to love people. We went out to dinner with uh, Joe's sister last night, and she says, I can't get over. People stop when you cross the street. She lives in California. And she goes, and people let you go. You know, think about that. When you're on the mainland, do those things, your life is in your hands when you're crossing a street. But the generosity of spirit that we have is with us here in Hawaii. And don't you think maybe that has something to do with why we love living here? Because there's that openness and that that feeling of that spirit. And especially everyone says on this island, because it is alive. Pele's spirit is alive. This is where King Kamehameha was born. 
So here we have a lot of that energy. The Hawaiian healing is here. And we love it. Don't we love it? That's prosperity. We live by the water. We live by the mountains. We can go anywhere we want on this island and have a prosperous day. Even if things don't seem to be going the way we plan. Do you ever have those days? And so what are we taught in unity? To look for the good. No matter what is happening around us, to find that spark of life, that light within the mind of God that says, it's going to be all right. And this is great. This is great. So the many ways that I have learned in unity to do this whole prosperity and open conscious mind is to do various different things. Pray and meditate every day. And Edwin calls the big frog. You got to swallow it. It's about tithing. And when I say the word tithing, what happens inside of you? Juice. You get you closed up. Any of y'all? Any of you other people do that? I did. I used to be that way. What comes up for us when I say tithing? Ten percent. Ten percent of what? Of everything you get. Ten percent of your good you give to the person, place, or institution where you receive your spiritual food. Is that a big thing for most people to swallow? It is. It's a scary thing. But I heard this also a long time ago. A hundred dollars at the mall is nothing. A hundred dollars at church is a lot of money. Because we live in a world where we want to get that instant gratification for whatever is coming our way. So if I'm going to give you $100, I expect to see something in return. I don't necessarily want to just feel better or get a new idea, right? So that $100 or that 10% scares most of us because of that fact. We can't see an immediate result. If I'm going to order something from Amazon, I can see it, I can pay for it, and it'll be here in a couple of days. I know it's coming. But if I come to church on Sunday, hear something wonderful, see my friends, get filled spiritually, and walk outside, and life begins to happen, am I going to be so happy in three days? Because I'm not getting nothing from Amazon. <laughs> Hey, that'd be a good thing to put on Amazon. Hey, okay, I got a note to self. Remember, we had a divine idea during this lesson. So it's amazing and it's very challenging. So I had to, when I came to Unity, and especially with Edwin Gaines, she was my teacher for prosperity. And I had to let go of seeing the thermometer, of seeing that whatever I gave to my unity church or wherever I gave it to I was gonna feel good about it because it's really important to feel good about where you're fed spiritually and where you're gonna give it to so in the beginning I've been tithing on and off most of my life but it was always like hit or miss Catherine ponders words if you want prosperity to flow do it all the time don't, if you want a little prosperity and you send a little bit here, guess what's going to come back to you? A little bit. And if you do a little bit here and a little bit there, and it's going to be scattered everywhere, and your prosperity will then be scattered. Because thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. We've all heard of the law of attraction, right? Who hasn't? Anybody not know when you hear about the law of attraction? What we think, we put out it comes back. You want more love? Give love. You want more peace? Be peaceful. You want more joy? Give joy. You want more happiness? Give happiness. You want more money? What are you going to do? You're going to give. Back in the day when I decided to make the commitment about tithing, 
I was married at the time, and we had a business. So I began to tithe on our business. My spouse was not happy about that because we had great weeks. We had a used furniture store. That's what we did, and our children were raised in this wonderful business of generosity. We've always been kind. We had a little green box on my desk, and I would ask people, is there anything special you're looking for? And they would say yes, and I said, well, believe it or not, if you tell me what you want, I'll put it on this card, I'll put it in this green box, and I'll be calling you to let you know when it's here. And they're like, what? Because we allowed those truth principles to manifest in our work. And it happens, it happened, and we still do it here. Do we tell people at the thrift store, you looking for anything? Well, just let us know because it will come. And does it not come? Are we amazed every time we go, wow, that person just asked for that and here it is. I mean, to the T. You gotta watch out for what you ask for because it will come to you, everything does. So back in the day when I was learning about this whole thing about spirituality and being generous and giving and thoughtful and all those things, I thought I was already that. But it's like when you start to really consciously do it, it expands. And so Edwin said she was a woman of power and she wanted to change the consciousness of prosperity on planet Earth. She wanted everyone to know that you live in an abundant universe. And how many of you truly know that? Do you feel and know that we live in an abundant world? We absolutely do. There is so much abundance, including money, even though you hear the opposite. I know people who will spend six thousand, six thousand, six million dollars on a house in Honolulu to tear it down and build a dream house. That's how much money there is, and more. When you live in that consciousness, you see it. So lately I asked God, okay, I wanna be able to think that big. That if I wanted this property on the water, I could pay five or six million dollars and build my dream house. Even though I, my mind says, that's a big waste of money. But not for someone who wants that. So we have to expand our consciousness constantly. Back in the day, Edwin's challenge to us was to swallow the big frog. That's what her daddy said. If you got to swallow a bunch of frogs, she was from the south, and he would say, swallow the big one first, and that's the tithing frog. And I was like, oh, how can I do this? So I began to tithe on my own income, not on our household income, because that was my minister's advice. How do I tithe if my husband doesn't want to do it? So you tithe on what comes to you. And so July 7th, 1985 is when I started tithing. And I've continued to do that through thick and thin since then. And when I became a divorced single parent was the first time I really became afraid to tithe because there was only so much income that I could see even though I had this consciousness of prosperity. It was like four kids by myself, I make this and my rent is 80% of that. How am I gonna make it? Through faith. So I would be scared sometimes, but I still would tithe. And what happened is the universe came and supported me. I remember the first Christmas that I was on my own and three kids were living at home, and I remember telling them, I have $30 a piece for each of you for Christmas, so think wisely about what you'd like to have. And they were used to these grandiose Christmases. Any of you ever go all out for your children at Christmas time? <laughs> yeah, most of the world does that, right? So we did, and uh, there it was, and I remember I was afraid to tell them, but I wanted them to know that this may not be like any Christmas we've ever had before, but we're still prosperous and God is the source of our supply. And I remember these envelopes started being left at our door, coming in the mail, and they were filled with cash. And they would just be signed, lovingly, your Christmas angels. 
And I'm talking to a couple hundred dollars every couple of days from I don't even know to this day. I always thought I knew who it was, but I have no idea. And my girls, we lived in Palo Alto at the time, and they needed to dress well. Some of their parents, their friends' parents, would take them to the Stanford Shopping Center and buy them wardrobes, brand new clothes. I had two girls and a little boy. It was amazing. And so I continued to keep doing and putting that foot forward and to continue to tithe, continue to make plans, continue to grow spiritually to the best of my ability, no matter what the outside circumstance looked like. That's what I can tell you. And to this day, I still tithe. Do I ever get afraid about money? No, because God is a source of our supply. Abundantly, we live in an abundant universe. And to allow that energy to flow is incredible. And so what Edwin advised to anyone, and I have some of her books here too for you, if you'd like to purchase them, I think I have six or eight of them on my desk. And it's called The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. And everything about unity is about that, changing the way we think so we create a better world. And not just for us, but for everyone around us. And so when you decide that you're going to take this leap of faith, and I invite you to do it, it's going to change your life. And so Edwin says, try it for six months and see what happens. Just try it. You have nothing to lose. Because what happens to most everyone when you begin tithing and giving generously, you have more money from the money that you knew you already had. And you're not worried about paying your bills. You're not worried about having to fix your car. You're not worried about those things that plagued you and dragged you down before. They seem to be lifted because you begin to trust and know that God is the source of all good, all supply, all the time. This, I think it was this past week I had my interview, wasn't it? It's like the weeks are kind of like rolling in together. So I had my orientation, not my orientation, my ordination interview this week by International Unity Ministers. So we had a minister from Algeria, England, Ohio, Colorado, New Zealand. And they're all asking me questions about me, my applications, my beliefs in unity. And what kept coming to me was that God is a source of my supply. Whether this happens or doesn't happen, it's all for the best and highest good. And I said, that's the teaching that keeps me going in this movement and about prayer. And like when Nick says he goes out by the ocean and listens to that three minute meditation on you pray, it is phenomenal to do that all day long because that's what I do. And as many of you know, my doctor now does it too because I showed her the you pray app. How great is that? So wherever we are, we can bring our consciousness to another level. And when you become afraid, how many of you get afraid about things in your day? We do. Those moments and those thoughts. So through truth, through practicing these principles, we begin to know, okay, I'm loved. God loves me exactly as I am. And I'm going to continue to move forward on this journey. Because it is a journey. And do you want to journey alone? I don't want to do that anymore. I like to be with friends and family and loved ones, and we're all talking about these things, these spirituality things, and we're talking about other things that don't matter to anybody else but us, because God is so good in our lives. And we think about it, we have all this music and song in this church. That's a manifestation of God right here in this little spot in Kona. Are we blessed? Yes, we are. Are we blessed by our facility 
Absolutely. Our thrift store. Are we blessing the community by having that thrift store? Absolutely. Yesterday, this girl, and I think she was maybe 12, she was reading to her little sister in the thrift store. And the little sister was running around. Do you remember that, Carla? And so the mom was there, but the daughter was paying for everything the mom was buying. So clothes for her sister. She also wanted some comic books. And all these things, and the mom just said, oh, she's going to pay for everything today. So I said, OK, what's your budget? And she said, well, let's see how this adds up. So of course, I discounted everything. She wanted comic books because she loved to read. She bought some other books for herself and CDs and all that. And I said, do you have $12? So she hands me a 20. And she felt so prosperous and so proud. And I was like, I remember what it was like to earn your money when you're a kid and to pay for something you surely, surely wanted. And she was spreading the wealth in her family. I got really emotional yesterday. And then, of course, then I questioned what I did, because that's what happens in the real world. So my mind says, oh, you shouldn't do that. Maybe she needs to learn the power of budgeting. And she needs to, you know, I went on into my conscious mind that says, girl, you shouldn't have done that. And I was like, oh, it felt good for a moment. And it was like, that's God. That guidance and the direction that you get in that moment is prosperity. And what a beautiful thing. She was so happy. We bagged up her stuff and her sister's stuff. And her mom was very grateful. That's what all this is about. We reach out and help each other on a daily basis. Every day, someone is in need. And if I'm so full of myself and selfish and self-centered, I can't see it. So when I put my hand out and become willing to give, I don't know where that's going to go. But I'm willing to suit up and show up. Because God is a source of my supply, of our supply, of bringing us together in truth. That's what this is about. So I invite you to take a look at where you are and what your plans are for your future. Where do you want to be? What do you want to do? And who do you need to forgive? Because that's all part of this plan too. To be generous in your spirit, generous in your mind and your heart and in your body. And let God continue to fill you every moment of every day with truth. Your truth. The truth that will set you free. Free from fear. Free from lack. Free from want. Because God is the source of our supply. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>